and I'm back. I, I hope you guys found that enjoyable, or at least not unenjoyable. Uh, again, I don't consider myself, you know, the greatest, you know, put the name of whatever your favorite musician is here. I, I'm not that guy, most likely. Uh, but I do like creating stuff, and, and I am happy with some of my work, at least. I pump out a lot. Um, but hopefully I didn't, you know, run off a bunch of you guys who, who just thought that my music was horrible. Ah, oh, I just need a little break. It's a long day. Uh, so, I uh, was going through stuff, found this recently. It's a 256 megabyte flash drive. Uh, Geek Squad, you know, um, Best Buy's little thing. Uh, I got this on the back, it has the date of manufactured date, or copyright date of 2014 copyright. Copyright on, I guess, the look of this? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I got this, you know, <laughs> over 15 years ago, close to 15 years ago. Uh, but I bring it up because, one, it's 256 megabytes, uh, and it probably cost me 25 bucks back then. Uh, it's, it's just amazing how far we've come. And although I'm not a, a big fan of Geek Squad services, because seriously, um, <laughs> hmm. I'm going to say this, probably going to insult some people out there. Uh, I wouldn't trust these people with my computer. If someone is good with computers, they're not running around fixing other people's computers or doing something useful with computers. Uh, that being said, anyway, uh, the Geek Squad, the, there is one thing that I like about them, and a few of their products are like this, and this is just one that I have. On the back here, there's a little caution, a warning. It says geeksquad.com, then it says, despite being excellent for transporting files, this drive does not increase your capacity for mental telepathy. <laughs> Obviously a joke, and true at the same time, because you want to put something false on a product like this. But I, I always found that funny. That and There was a uh, another one, it might have been the same product, maybe on the outside packaging. Uh, it said uh, something like, uh, this, this product is great for transferring files, but should not be used as a flotation device. And I love when companies have sense of humor like this, uh, even though, you know, I'm not a big uh, Best Buy or Geek Squad uh, fan. I just love companies that put little jokes like that, take the time for humor and stuff. Uh, 20 years ago, I was working for a company in town, uh, an electrical company. We install lights. Uh, I spent a little bit of time running wires, but for most part, I was programming the lights. They were um, uh, Lutron systems, I believe is what they were called. And I would... Uh, you know, program the lighting system so that uh, basically, I think I, I talked about this, I've talked about this before, um, every light in the house, or every, every set of lights, were run to modules in the garage, or someplace, usually the garage, where there's a panel, and each panel would have uh, these modules, usually two per panel, and each module could handle it was either four or eight sets of lights, and we had relay modules and dimmer modules. And dimmer modules were a lot, both, both were very expensive back at the time. And again, uh, in my house, I got little zap outlets, uh, which cost about five bucks each, where these things were, I want to say, our cost, before we would charge for installation and, and to the sellers, I think our cost was like $800 per module, not counting the panel and running in the wires and all that stuff. And that was for the relays, and the dimmer ones were more expensive. Um, anyway, I think it was, no, it wasn't when I was working there. I'm, I'm complete. I was working somewhere. Might have been, yeah, it was there. It was there. I went back into the warehouse. So I worked for an electrical company. We, you know, install lights and I did the programming. When you press this button, turn on these sets of lights uh, and dim them to this percentage over this amount of time. It was mostly data entry. I wasn't really writing very much code or really any code. I used it in coding concepts. I, you would do if then statements, but it was in drop downs. I wasn't actually typing out the code. Although I could pull the, the file it generated and see the code in there. And I wish I knew more about programming back then, but I used to mess with those files. That was fun. Anyway, I go, uh, I worked for this company, and then there was the, the sister company or the parent company. Uh, basically, there was this audio company. They did audio systems and houses, and that company kind of bought the company I was working for, and they were they were in one building. So I go into the warehouse for this audio company, and they have all this audio equipment, and one of the boxes on the side, uh, it was for, I don't know, some audio device, a receiver or something like that, and it said, it said on the side of the box, do not, uh, the, you know, this device is great for for audio output, but do not 
fry or saute this receiver or whatever it was. And I looked at that, I go, I go, that is hilarious. And whoever I was working with goes, oh, you, this company, you read through their owner's manual, it's just loaded full of stuff like that. And I just love, again, when companies have sense of humor like this, How, what do you guys think? Um, you know, things like, you know, that this the USB drive is great for transferring files, but uh, isn't good for increasing your mental telepathy capacity. Um, if I ever owned a company of any type, I would definitely do humorous stuff like that. Obviously, you gotta be careful. You wanna make sure that like this, your statement is true. Uh, you don't wanna say something that could be uh, portrayed as real and is not. Uh, obvious, obviously, this is not gonna increase my mental telepathy. It's a, it's a true statement. Uh, going back to like uh, Geek Squad and Best Buy, you know, back in the day, back in the late 90s, I worked for Circuit City two different occasions, one time in customer service, one time in the computer department, and uh, I was a horrible salesman uh, for Circuit City. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Circuit City is, it's like a big Radio Shack. You no, know, what's funny is people used to get us mixed up with Radio Shack all the time, and they really were a very different. Radio Shack was a very small place you go to get electronics, you can buy, uh, they would sell cell, they're still around, a few of them, they would sell cell phones um, and, uh, and portable phones and radios. Circuit City had a department for that, but we also, you know, we sold music, we sold vacuum cleaners, refrigerators, Circuit City did a little bit more. It was Best Buy. It was like a Best Buy. Best Buy was our only real competition back then, and there wasn't one here in town. Now, I live in Naples, Florida, uh, which is a very, um, uh, it's an expensive place to live. There's there's a lot of rich people here. I kind of live way out in the outskirts of town, uh, which I like because I got a big property for a lot less than if I was in town. Uh, but we, because of the the rich people around here, that's one of the reasons we had the top one of the top stores, top store in Florida, one of the top stores in the U.S. as far as sales for Circuit City. Um, and uh, the problem with that was uh, a little bit after I started working there, and we were the top store. Uh, you know, headquarters decided this is such a great store. We're going to take each department manager and make them a manager at their own store, which in theory is a great idea. But all it really ended up doing was turning our store into crap because we just started hiring managers off the street who had no clue what they were doing uh, to do certain to approve certain returns. We would need a manager to swipe their card and type in their code. And we had these managers who had no clue how our systems work because they were just hired off the street. They didn't work their way up. And so basically we would just call them over and they would you know, go to swipe their card and then they look at the screen and they didn't know how the system works. So half the time we just said, swipe your card, give me your code and I'll do this for you. Uh, so the managers, so our store kind of went to crap. Uh, the, the managers we had before were mostly very cool people. They were great to work with, which made it a great work environment, which is one of the things that made the store so great. And again, they just separated them all out into different stores, which might be good for those other stores, but turned our store into crap. And again, one of the main reasons, uh, the sales were so good is just because we lived in a good area for selling stuff and we didn't have competition. The closest thing was a Best Buy up in Fort Myers, which was 45 minutes to an hour away. Um, so, yeah, that circuit city, obviously they're all gone now, but it just, it just went downhill after that. And again, in theory, it's a good idea. This is a great store. The management was great. Let's spread them all out. But all it did was turn the store to crap. And again, circuit city isn't here anymore because just, I'm surprised Best Buy is around still. I mean, literally, it's, it's a place to go to test things out before you go buy it someplace cheaper, either online usually, or even I much rather buy stuff at Walmart. The return policy is better, price is usually better, um, but whatever. So, uh, so yeah, Circuit City, you know, like I said, I worked there twice. The second time I worked in sales. First time I was in customer service, second time in sales. I only worked in sales for a couple of weeks. So the first week uh, working in sales is just training. So I'm back watching videos, learning how to be a salesman. Uh, then they put me out on the floor and I was a horrible salesman and I worked completely off commission. Uh, so I barely sold anything that first week. So when I got my paycheck, what they did was they just brought me up to minimum wage, which sucked because that was one of two jobs I had at the time. Another job I had was, was down in the same shopping center working at GNC general nutrition center where I made nine bucks an hour plus commission. Uh, and I was averaging with the commission and you know, like 11 bucks an hour, this is 20 years ago and I'm, I'm 18, 19 years old. So, you know, 11, 12 bucks an hour is pretty good. And when I worked at GNC, again, I was making $9 an hour. I sell a $20 bottle of vitamin, vitamins, I'd make $2 commission. And usually it was buy one, get one half price. Uh, 
and so you usually sold two so I would sell you know two bottles of vitamins I'd make four dollars on top of my nine dollars well Circuit City wasn't like that Circuit City was commission only and I could sell a two or three hundred dollar computer monitor and I would make a buck fifty which was horrible so that first week I didn't I didn't make it to a part and they had to pay me at least minimum wage uh, which was like I don't know, five seventy-five or something at the time. Well, the next week I sold a little bit more. I did a little bit better. So I should have been a little bit above minimum wage. Well, because I was below minimum wage the, the paycheck before, they took the difference out of this. So I made minimum wage the second week. And I was like, you know what? Goodbye. Uh, but one of the reasons I, I would consider myself not a good salesman is I, I didn't really upsell people. I would if I felt like they needed it. But this is back in where most people were still up on dial-up. Dial up. Uh, you know, high-speed internet was kind of a new thing. You know, cable internet, DSL, most people didn't have it. But I would have these old people. Again, I live in Naples where not only is there a large, rich community, there's also it's also, I think, you know, majority of the people who live here are over 70. So I'd have these older people come in and they just want to be able to email and get pictures of their grandkids. And they're on dial-up. And uh, they would come in and be like, oh, I got this computer. I want to upgrade to a faster computer so that I can download things faster. I'd be like, well, you're on dial-up. Getting a faster computer is not going to make you download the images any, any faster. They might load a little bit faster once they're downloaded. Uh, but, but even then, I mean, back then, loading a picture, I mean, most pictures, if you had a digital camera, were, you know, VGA resolutions, 640 by, by um, uh, 480. So it didn't take long for pictures to load. They just took a while to download. I'd be like... No, I, I really do not recommend buying a whole new computer because it's not going to make it any faster because your problem, if everything's running fine, except for when you're downloading your email, upgrading your computer is not going to help because it's because you're using dial-up. And, uh, and I felt like, you know, I was being honest. Also, uh, digital cameras are relatively new. A lot of digital cameras were only VGA, but then the, one, you know, the higher ones were 1.2, 1.5 megapixels. And, uh, you know, I would show people I had different cameras. I, I printed up using a printer, uh, a very nice HP printer at the time, and showing the people the difference. And it's like, okay, so if I take a picture of someone's face with a VGA resolution or take the same picture with a 1.2 megapixels, you're not going to see much of a difference. Now, if you're taking pictures of people, like a group of people, that, that one megapixel camera would make a bigger difference in seeing the detail of people's faces. But a close-up shot like this, you know, it's not going to make a difference. I, you know, I try to explain that to people. And I talked about how the printer is really important. And back then, you know, I loved the HP printer I have, and I would always upsell that. And that was, that was, that printer was probably like three, four hundred bucks for, for this HP printer back then. And, um, I loved it. I loved it. You know, I, personally, I don't print photos anymore. It's cheaper just to get them printed somewhere like Sam's Club or something like that. You don't have to worry about it messing up halfway through. I mean, I haven't even checked the prices of, of printer or, uh, photo paper in years. Um, I probably still have some in a drawer just because I don't use it. I don't know. Do you guys do you guys print your own photos? Uh, I don't even keep up to date on the technology on that. I mean, back in the day, so I had the inkjet printer printing photos. Problem with that is if it got wet at all, the ink would run. If you try to put it behind glass, it, it, it would kind of stick to the glass. You guys know what I'm talking about? You print up a, a inkjet printer on, on photo paper. You put it in a frame behind glass and the, the ink would kind of stick to it so it looked if it, you know, places it would stick another, it just didn't look right. Um, but at the time they started coming out with printers that would print a clear coat over the images after printing. Some printers would do that. And then they would have ones that would also um, actually develop. I think it was uh, Sony had one where it would actually have chemical paper and like develop a photo on there. I don't know what the technology is now. I mean, uh, do, do inkjets do, is it normal for them to do coatings now? I, I, don't, I don't even know. I don't print photos. Uh, I think it's just, you know, most people just get them printed, right? If you're going to get it printed, I mean, at Sam's Club, it's probably under a dollar for an 8x10, where at least back in the day, a decent photo paper was over a dollar a sheet, plus the cost of ink, which is expensive. People complain about gas prices. I mean, think about how expensive you, you spend, you know, I don't know, 20 to $30 easy on a little ink cartridge this big. Um, so yeah. Printing so much better doesn't isn't, isn't going to fade as much as the inkjet ones. So anyway, I'm just talking past. Working at Circuit City was was awesome at least at first, um, but you know it got old after a while. Uh, but yeah, so so yeah, I, I only worked a couple of weeks in uh, as a salesperson uh, there, and then I, I just said you know what, forget it. And I was still working over at GNC again, making eleven or twelve dollars an hour, which may not sound like that much nowadays since people are pushing for like minimum wage of 
fifteen dollars an hour. <laughs> uh, I, I don't even know minimum wage is what seven something an hour now. Uh, so it's two dollars more so than it was back then. But uh, yeah, at nineteen, and I was only I was only working. Oh, and then you know shortly after that, I was still working at GNC. Uh, when I stopped working at GNC, the next thing I did was was photography. I used to do real estate photography around town. That was an, an awesome gig. Um, I would charge $25 a job, and you get five shots. If the house was over a million dollars, uh, you would get 10 shots, and it would cost $50. If it was a certain distance from where I lived, I'd charge an extra $10. And there were some realtors, like I remember this one husband and wife team, they had... Uh, there was this big high-rise condo where every single one of those condos was over a million dollars. It was at the outskirts of town, and they would call me up, and I'd go do two or three of them at a time, and I'd be done in an hour. I just made 150 bucks easy, um, which was awesome, and it was just digital. I just dropped the discs off at the realtor office, and they upload it to their website and stuff. Um, and that eventually came to an end when, at the same time back then, they had the virtual tours, which were similar to like the sphere photos you do with Google Now. And just guys would go there, they would have a wide angle camera, and they would take all these shots put together. And you go online, they would have a little flash interface that you could look around the rooms. And those people were already going out of the houses doing this. They're like, hey, for $10 more, we'll take your photos for you. I'm like, well, I'm not going to go out to people's houses for 10 bucks a pop. You know, it's not worth my time. So that, that was short lived. I did that for maybe a year. And then, and then I also made extra money at that time going, working for the realtor, uh, realtor office where after I would drop off the photos, I'd actually come in and organize them in their database for them, which was something else I did. Um, and that was interesting because they had uh, a printer there and it, it was a big, you know, professional uh, grade printer uh, and a computer when it was HP and, you know, it would... Um, it was... Uh, it took toner, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't inkjet. What, what do you call it when it takes toner? It's... A laser jet. Laser jet? Yeah. Um, man, it would print photo. It would print those forms fast. And, uh, you know, with photos, little flyers and stuff. And, you know, it wasn't as good a quality as the inkjet, but it was pretty good. And it, you know, could print, I don't know, 50 or 60 of them. It was like one a second, something like that. Uh, but I was told that the printer, the copier itself was twenty or $30,000. And then you needed the HP computer to go with it, which was another $20,000. So we're looking at forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 worth of printing material. And that thing broke every week. <laughs> I'd say every week to every other week, there was somebody in there, you know, a technician fixing it. I mean, it got good use. That thing was constantly printing. Um, but I hate printers. I hate printers with a passion. I love computers. I hate printers. Uh, I mean, there are times where you need physical copy stuff, but if I can keep it digital, that is awesome. And if I need to print photos, I'd much rather have someplace print it and not have to worry about paper jams, things aligning properly, you know, with the cost of ink, uh, not using your printer for a while, and the, and the, and the heads uh, getting clogged up. Anyway, uh, so let's go inside and... Uh, look at something else so I'm going along what do we I don't even know what time it is it's been what four or five hours now I've been streaming here okay let's see do 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 do